Spoilers ahead. Watch out, and take care. The movie starts with a blonde girl named Anna, who opens a puzzle box, discovering a key. As she does that, she hears a noise coming from downstairs, and goes to check with an intense expression on her face. Upon getting there, she is upset to see her brother sitting outside in the dead of the night, she tells him to get back inside, but he asks her to join him, saying it's a beautiful night. She however closes the door behind him, asking him to get back inside soon. The next morning, as her fragile brother lies in his bed, he tries talking to her, but she does not listen to him, because she is upset about last night. Another woman named Charlotte arrives, who is her brother's lawyer, and they talk about how they are worried about the fact, that he might not be around for too long, as the cancer is eating him inside. The lawyer tells Anna, that Conrad has made all the arrangements already, and she just needs to sign the papers. Conrad wants to make sure his sister does well when he is not around. Charlotte tries to convince Anna to sign the papers, but she does not get on with it. After that, Anna's friend Dan arrives, he brings her food every day. As she receives the food, she hears a noise and rushes back inside the house, and sees that Conrad has fallen off of his bed. She helps him back into his bed, and the two siblings share a tender moment, as Conrad holds her in his arms, and she cries saying how is she going to live without him. Conrad however tells her that she is a big girl now, she needs to see the world, and he does not want to be the one holding her back. He then asks her to forgive their father, but Anna gets angry at this, and tells him that she is never going to forgive him, and leaves. That night, Conrad dies, and an ambulance takes him away. As Anna takes care of her deceased brother's stuff, she cries as he was the only one she had. The door knocks, and Dan is there with the food again. When he tries to make her laugh as he always does, Anna has a breakdown. As they sit together, he consoles her by telling her, she did more than anyone could have done for him. He then asks Anna if she is going to leave her house, now that her brother is gone, but she tells him that this place belongs to her, and it has always been her house, so she is not going anywhere. As they talk about their agonies, Anna asks him if he could escape all these problems, would he? Dan tells her that he would, but he can't, because he has no money. Anna goes inside and brings a bag full of cash, she tells Dan to take the money if it helps him escape his situation. He however tells her, that he could not take her money. The next day, it is Conrad's funeral, but Anna is not able to go there, she gets ready for it, but she does not find the courage. Despite Charlotte trying to make sure she is at the funeral, she just sits in her house and listens to everything. She then hangs up the phone, and goes to make some tea for herself. Anna sees a car being parked near her house. Three boys come out of it, and they peek through the window to look inside her house. One boy then breaks into the house through the back door, while Anna, scared to death, hides under a table. As they look around, Anna sneaks into the kitchen. Much to her dismay, the tea kettle starts whistling. The boys come to the kitchen, but Anna manages to sneak out of there in time. She goes upstairs, and when one of the intruders named Perry gets there, she screams out of fear and gets out of there. Anna runs downstairs, and she has a chance to escape, but she ends up freezing in the main door. The boys are a little weirded out seeing that, they then ask her why she did not go to her brother's funeral. Perry then enters the room with gasoline in his hand, Vance is however scared, and suggests they leave. Perry notices that she did not even call the police, Henson asks her the reason behind that, and she just tells them that she panicked and did not think of that. Perry suggests they kill her when she does not tell them about the money, but Vance makes it clear that there is going to be no killing. Two boys look for the money, while Perry keeps an eye on the girl, and keeps asking her why she did not run. He is surprised to learn that the woman has not left the house for the last 10 years. He then tries to break her, but she does not flinch. He takes her outside, and throws her on the floor with her feet taped. Her vision gets blurry as she tries to crawl. In the meantime, Henson gets there and holds her, as she begs him to take her inside. She is so scared that she wets herself, and then he takes her back inside the house. Vance then takes her upstairs, and gives her a clean dress to wear. They find two doors in the basement, but are unable to break them. Dan arrives looking for Anna, since she was not at her brother's funeral. She is shocked to see that these people know Dan. However, Dan is still on Anna's side, Perry and Henson arrive there and knock out Dan. Anna goes into hiding again. Vance threatens to kill her pet bird if she does not come out. Even after killing it, Anna does not move. She then sneaks into the bathroom, Vance realizes this, and alerts his other two partners. As Vance stands there, she stabs him in the neck. Henson asks Vance if he has caught her, but they hear nothing, until Anna drags his body to the basement. The two rush to the basement following the blood, and find their partner dead. Henson cries for his brother, and Perry notices an open door. 
He sees Anna in there, but when he tries to catch her, she gets out of there and runs upstairs, locking the door behind her. Perry now tells Henson that something is wrong with his house, and that they should leave. Upstairs, Anna gets the mysterious key, and retracts the staircase. She then goes to the basement and closes the door. Two of them are now trapped there. Anna is furious, she goes to Dan, who asks her to cut him loose, but she does not do that. Anna now thinks that Dan has been planning the robbery all along, Dan denies this, telling her that only Vance is his friend, and he does not know the other two. He admits that he did tell Vance about the money, but that happened in a casual conversation when he was talking to him about her, as he reveals that he cannot stop thinking about her. Dan tells her that he could never hurt her, but she still finds it hard to believe him. Dan then asks her why she did not leave the house, and she reveals that she has not done that since her father died. Conrad was there to help her get through any problem she faced. Angry and hurt, Anna breaks two of his fingers, and cuts his bonds. She pushes him into the basement, and he dislocates his knee in the fall. Perry pops Dan's kneecap back into place, and takes pleasure in Dan's pain. Perry then blames Henson for everything, as he is the one who stopped him from killing her. After a while, Anna goes to the basement to check on the boys, and Perry again threatens her, while Dan begs her to take him to the hospital. As Dan screams in pain, Anna tells Henson that there is a first aid kit in the room, and when he enters the room, Anna locks him inside. As Henson looks around, he is weirded out, as the room looks exactly the same as the room upstairs. Perry keeps trying to break the door, and he finally manages to do that, as Anna monitors everything on a screen. She then grabs a hammer and makes her way there, Perry on the other hand walks into a room, and realizes that it is a torture room. He finds a door to the room where Henson has been trapped, and tries to open it, he finds the stairs, and reaches a room using the stairs, and when he gets there, Anna hits him on the head with a hammer. He still tries to choke her, but dies in the process. Dan hears everything and tries to linger his way out of there, but he is shocked to his core, when he sees dead bodies in the freezer. As he tries to escape, the scene changes, and Charlotte appears to check on Anna. Anna tries to act normal, but Charlotte hears Dan begging for help. Anna tells her that Dan is just working on an old radiator. Charlotte leaves after that, while Anna then goes to Dan, and helps him to the room where she killed Perry. She then releases him into the room where she has trapped Henson. Henson is now scared for his life, as Dan tells him about Perry's death and about the dead body in the freezer. Henson says that the woman is watching them through a mirror in that room, and breaks it right away. But Anna tells him to save his energy, as it is bulletproof. She then starts playing with him, and makes him wear a shirt. As Anna watches from the cameras, Henson deduces the truth of their situation, that Conrad was a serial killer, who lured his victims into the basement, and killed them while Anna watched, thus explaining the various contraptions around the house. He also adds that as they tortured the victims, Anna watched and took joy in talking to them, but Anna tells him that she did not talk to them. She confirms this, but clarifies that all of their victims were child molesters, as was her father. Anna then tells Henson to stop talking, but he keeps going on and on, telling her that no one is coming to help her, as Conrad is already dead. Anna tries to justify her actions, that they just killed perverts. She then recalls the story of her father's abuse. She tells them that he used to abuse her, until Conrad killed him, and put an end to her agony. She then promises to release Dan if he kills Jensen, and reveals a gun with a single bullet, but Dan refuses. Henson grabs the gun, and Anna tries to convince him to kill himself, for causing his younger brother's death. He laughs at this and points the gun at Dan. Anna, who does not want Dan to die, unlocks the door, and Henson and Dan escape. In a fit of rage, Henson decides to go back in for revenge. Hoping to burn her to death, he pours gasoline around the house. He attacks Anna, trying to choke her with a pillow, and alludes to having his way with her after she passes out. Dan arrives when she is near death, and distracts Henson enough for her to grab the gun from Henson's pants, and shoot him. Dan and Anna share a long look, and he leaves without a word. Anna listens to him drive away. She then stands and takes one step out the door. On her way out, she sparks the blaze, burning the house and its secrets. The end. Thank you for watching. Subscribe if you'd like to see more videos like this. Turn on the notifications, and leave a like to help the channel out.